Well, good morning. My name is Willie Lawson. This is Morning Report. Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. I trust that you are well this glorious morning here. Um, we're going to find this. This is going to be something new uh, or something different. Y'all, you're always doing something new. Uh, I didn't do a video for Friday's Morning Report. This is a video for Friday's morning report that's up on uh, that's going to be up on the on, on the on the on the Facebook page and the YouTube page and probably will have a pretty short life um, because Monday I'm going to do a new video and a new uh, uh, morning report. So and, and and the reason I didn't do a video is because I was not wearing the right clothes. You know, it's funny. Uh, I teach saxophone, flute and clarinet. And I tell all, all my youngsters that are thinking of going into music, um, being professional uh, musicians, I always tell them this. The first two pieces of advice, and I'll give that those two pieces of advice to all anybody who is going into a career. Do two things. Show up on time and wear the right clothes. <laughs> there you go. Show up on time and wear the right clothes. That'll put you ahead of almost everybody nowadays <sighs> nice cold water a little sam purified water absolutely delicious and i was wearing the wrong shirt i was wearing a a, a shirt of um, that i had from my wife's company uh not her company but the company that she works for and i tried to, i tried not to do that because well, y'all know how i get right so i'm trying to do that um so as it turned out it was late I want to change, so I didn't do it. <laughs> I ain't do it. Uh, but so I wasn't. So I was on time, but I was not wearing the right clothes. Uh, so I couldn't do it. Show up on time, wear the right clothes. Um, so if it's a beach gig, and they tell you to wear beach clothes, wear beach clothes. If it's a beach gig and they tell you wear a tuxedo, wear a tux. Wear a tuxedo, even if you have to make one up. Even if you have to get a, a go to Goodwill and get a, a black jacket and a. And, 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 and find a tuck shirt somewhere for $15 and some black pants uh, and a bow tie, a clip on if necessary, get a tux, make one, I mean, make one if you can't, if you can't find one. Uh, when I first started gigging uh, and needed a tux, I would actually, I would actually lose money on the gig because I would go rent one. So if you... <laughs> Crazy, right? So if you had a gig and it paid you 150 bucks, but you spent 120, 25 dollars on renting a renting a tuxedo, you, I mean, you pretty much lost money on the gig after traveling there and you know and food and whatever. Uh, but it was important to establish a reputation of, of a guy uh, who did what they you know who did whatever the gig called for. The gigs, the gigs that wear, wear tux. So you found, I mean, it was the cheapest tux you could rent. Um, and you were only going to use it for a day. You were going to put it on once, and then you're going to take it off, put it back in the bag. And if you didn't have black shoes, the black shiny shoes, then you had to rent those too. And now you were, and now you were on the wrong side. You get me? Um, but and again, show up on time, wear the right clothes. And uh, I did not have the right clothes on yes, um, yesterday, so. Couldn't do a money report. But we're going to do one here on the channel and on the YouTube channel um, today. Now, as you're watching this, if you are someone who who, who, who is watching this on, on YouTube, do me a favor. And if you've not subscribed, please subscribe um, to the channel. I'm wondering if it's possible to get to a thousand uh, subscribers if we're even if we're even able to. Uh, you know, at, at one point I had to sort of, frankly, I'd, I'd given up on it. Um, but, and something said, you know what, as I'm watching, I have another channel that I do my uh, saxophone teaching on. And it is about a quarter, almost a quarter of a thousand. Is that even a thing? <laughs> even a thing? Uh, and I said, you know what, let's go ahead and try this. Um, my wife's little channel is growing. Uh, we're working our, our tail off. And when I'm done here, I got to do some SEO and sharing and doing some stuff on that channel and make that thing happen. Um, so let's see if we can get to this, get to a thousand. 
Uh, I don't know if we can be monetized or not, uh, but we don't have a thousand subscribers, so it's not even really in a conversation. So if if you can share this and subscribe and get your friends to share and subscribe, that would be very, very cool. Uh, let's try it. What have we got to lose? All right. Let's go ahead and get with the stories. Let's get with the stories. Uh, the first story is... Uh, hits close to home. Charlie Crist, who used to be, and I, and I heard this from him the other day, so so I, I mentioned many things. When I first got introduced to who Charlie Crist was, he was the uh, commissioner of education here in the state of Florida, and then he was the attorney general, uh, and then he was a Repu all, all the while being a Republican uh, or being in the Republican Party, and then he was the attorney general, and then he was the governor. And then he was an independent. And then he was a Democrat. And now he's a Democrat who's a U.S. rep. That's a lot of Charlie Crist, isn't it? That's a boatload, 64 gallons of Charlie Crist. But there's more. Uh, Representative Charlie Crist, who once again, the Democrat gubernator, who was once again the Democrat gubernatorial nominee in Florida, has uh, quite a, had quite a week since winning Tuesday night's primary. As, as, as we talked about before, on Wednesday, he had his own basket of deplorables moment saying that he didn't want, he wasn't trying to convince Ron DeSantis voters or, or supporters because they had hate in their heart. If you have hate in your heart. So he's not trying to convince you. He's, trying not, he's not trying to make the tent bigger. He's not trying to unify. And I, kind of, I guess I respect that, I guess, in, in, in a weird way. But it's not the way to win, really. Um, then Friday, uh, he chose that he was going to reveal that he was going to choose Carla Hernandez Motz as his running mate, the president, the president of the U United Teachers of Dade County, according to um, John Kennedy of the Tallahassee Heights Democrat. She has the largest teachers union in the Southeast. It almost seems like it's redundant. Those teachers who are Gung ho, blah blah blah. We're going to vote for Charlie Chris anyway. So I don't know how that expanded his range, but he's not interested in that, obviously. So there you go. Uh, so Carla Hernandez, Matt, president of uh, United Teachers of Day, joined her running mate at the rally at High Little Mil Hialeah Middle School, where he described her as empathetic and compassionate. Qualities Chris added that we don't have in the governor's office now. Here's what he says. We are here today to defeat Ron DeSantis and bring decency and respect back to the state of Florida, Hernandez said, outlining her support for the defend for defending abortion rights, because that's decent, to murder children. Uh, her voting access with an inclusion, which Democrats have made the theme of this year's con uh, contest. Um, voting rights access? Voting access? We just finished the primary here in Florida. They won handily. Did anybody, did anybody complain about not having, were there any stories about not having access to voting? Any? No, of course not, because it doesn't exist. It's a straw man argument that doesn't exist. Uh, and inclusion, not even sure what that, that means anymore, are we? Uh, <clears throat> Governor DeSantis is known for going up against a teacher's union or anyone who may get in the way of parents' rights, rights in his state. Um, Florida students were not only back at school for the 2021-22 school year, but DeSantis signed an executive order on July 30th in 2021, banning forced masking of students. It wasn't merely Hernandez Mott's words that served as an example of teachers unions going after DeSantis. Uh, Randy uh, Weingarten of the American Federation of Teachers has really gone after DeSantis. Um, of course, Hernandez Mott is vice president of AFT. Now who are, Let's back up. AFT. AFT is the American Federation of Teachers who are part of the AFL-CIO. Big union money. Big Democrat union money. So why does Charlie Chris pick her? Because she's attached to big union money. They're going to pour in a bunch of money from all over the country into this race. No, we're going to see this. They're going to pump. They're going to. They're going to pump in 
millions, maybe a billion dollars to try to unseat uh, Ron DeSantis. Uh, this is a poll that was commissioned by the AFT uh, last month, which found 56% of voters in several key battleground states, including, including here in Florida, are, quote, much more likely or somewhat more likely to vote for candidates who believe public schools should focus less on teaching students about race and racism and more on core academic subjects. So in the AFT poll, in the American Federation of Teachers, AFL-CIO poll, they found that most people would rather teachers talk about the core academic subjects and not race and racism. Who would have thought? Do your job. We talked about this before. We talked about teachers wanting to be treated like professionals and then acting like children as opposed to just doing your damn job. Find out what your job is and then do it. And then good get it, good get good, get good at it and do it. DeSantis decided in the law of the parental rights bill in March, which has falsely been dubbed the don't say gay bill. Doesn't say that. Uh, by critics, when teachers and unions also decried polls, shows that Floridians, including some Democrats, support the legislation. The governor also championed the Stop Woke Act last, late last year. When it comes to DeSantis opponents, specifically Chris's running mates, the Florida GOP put together quite a list of why she's dangerous for Florida, including her demonizing parents, protesting at school board meetings, as well as promoting critical race theory and anti-racist training. I'm not sure what, even what that is. Uh, most, like most teachers and unions did, she attacked um, DeSantis for reporting, for, excuse me, for reopening schools and the economy, even claiming that the lockdowns just haven't had an impact on young people. Really? In his report, Kennedy um, concluded the briefest comments from Republicans. Um, Republicans dismissed, her, dismissed Hernandez uh, for being a union leader who resisted DeSantis' push for reopening schools during the height of COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the Republican, Republican National Committee spokeswoman um, Julia Friedland called her the perfect fit for lockdown lover Chris's unpopular anti-parents campaign. He even went on to claim that there wasn't much uh, DeSantis campaign to be able to find out on Hernandez Motts. Uh, still, Hernandez Motts may not be an eye-catching pick. On the stage, she was low profile enough that DeSantis's war room social media team initially could only attack her for a couple of Twitter posts. Um, one was back in October of 21 when she likened some parents, parents, attending school bar meetings to Halloween monsters trick-or-treating at, at a door. Here's what she said. For any of you following the school board meetings, you know that the craziness is real, she posted. God be with us. This is, excuse me, this is the mentality of these people. So they are in a teacher's union, education union, that would not exist if it weren't for children which would not exist if it weren't for parents. Am I right? Yes, of course I'm right. Because y'all know I'm right an awful lot. Um, and so this woman who is in charge of the teachers union, education union, that would not exist had it, if it were not for the children and the children would not exist if it had not been for the parents demonizing parents, the parents who pay the freight, who pay the freight, always have. And in most systems will continue to. For being concerned about what their children are learning. But as the DeSantis attack team continued burrowing into her social media history, uh, it posted more on Twitter attacking her as a union boss 
for criticizing the governor's uh, demand to open up schools amid the COVID-19 pandemic. By Saturday morning, the DeSantis campaign had a lighted signboard outside the highly middle school attempting to link the politics of Chris running mate and the union and the United Teachers of Dade to Fidel Castro and the old Soviet Union. <laughs> Okay, I think that's a bit much. But anyway, Kennedy uh, spent more time addressing the supposed controversies uh, to do with the um, governor's Greek Scotch running mate in 2024, Jennifer Carroll. Chris was a Democrat nominee for, the, uh, for that year as well, but lost by one percentage point. It was close. There was virtually no mention of Kennedy's report on the controversies outlined by the Florida GOP. In reality, the DeSantis War Room Twitter account, as well as Christina P uh, Peshaw, who last month transitioned from DeSantis Press Secretary, the Rapid Response Director for the DeSantis re-election campaign, put forth a number of tweets. Um, Christina tweeted this, according to Charlie Chris's running mate, uh, teacher union boss Carla uh, hernandez Mots, you are against, if you're against mask mandates in the schools, you are not a parent. You are a soldier of false fall rage, uh, false narratives, and political interests, fired up with conspiracy theories. Here's what the United Teachers of Dade tweeted, and this was, I'm trying to, oh, the date was July 20th, 2021. Except those aren't parents. In fact, many of them don't even have children. They are soldiers of fake rage, false narratives, and political interests that want to create chaos and to keep their base fired up with the boogeymen and conspiracy theories. Hashtag fake news. That's what she thinks of you. That's what she thinks of you. Here's, a, here's the Herald journalist. Uh, this is from Christina as well, who wrote about the now convicted child rapist who was protected by the teacher union, Carla Hernandez Mott, for years. Uh, the journalist asked Carla for comment. Carla's assistant said that it's not our problem. It took two months for Carla to finally condemn the pedo. Here's the series of tweets. I asked Carla Amatz uh, uh, for comment on January 8th. I've asked for a comment multiple times since I and was directed to the, the, um, the union's lawyer. I got the comment in the story on Friday more than two months after my first inquiry. After two months, no condemnation here. Carla is in meetings in DC and asked me to get back to you on this. Hiring, firing, background checks and investigations are all handled and led by the district. If they are hired by the uh, Miami-Dade uh, County Public Schools, they are deemed to be qualified and safe to be in a school environment as far as the UTD and uh, young teachers um, of Dade and other district employees are concerned. Any further questions regarding this case would need to go to legal. Uh, would be happy to put you in touch with him. They're like, mm, not my problem. Not my problem. They protected a teacher. Ex-Brownsville Middle School teacher gets prison in sex abuse case. A former Miami-Dade public school physical education teacher accused of engaging in sexual acts with multiple underage students. Not protected by them for a long time. But this is who this person is. This is, this is who she is. That's, what, that's what's going on here. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, there's the picture. <laughs> there's the, and there's a picture here of the of uh, of Chris's running mate, uh, all nestled up against the um, Wendell Nibs, who pled guilty to sexual assault of children. That the person I was just talking, I was talking about. Here they are, all cuddled up against each other at the elementary school, I mean, at the middle school in, in Miami. Not a good look. Not a good look. All right, we're gonna take a little break. We'll be back with more of the program right after these messages. Hey y'all, my name is Willie Lawson uh, of Fightback Media and uh, Morning Report. 
there in the comments is a link to joining our email list. We'd love for you to do that. We'd love for you to have notification uh, when we put things up on Rumble. We'd love for you to have notification when we put new new programs up from, from the Morning Report on the website. And the only way that we can be assured that you would know is that if you join the email list. Yes, and we send out a number of emails. Not too bad, but a number of them. But please, in the first comment, please look at that link. Join the email list. We appreciate it. We'll see you when we see you. Bye-bye now. Oh, hey, y'all. Welcome back. My name is Willie Lawson. This is the uh, Morning Report. The Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. We are thrilled that you could be on the website today. Um, or, or you could be watching on YouTube or wherever the heck you're watching or not watching, wherever. Um, if you are, again, if you are watching on YouTube, uh, if you just happen to get here by some strange quinkadink, please subscribe, share, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Uh, we are trying our best to see if we can actually get to a thousand subscribers. That would be very cool. Uh, I don't know if, if monetization is in the cards for us. My guess is not, but you know, the, the, it, it, it doesn't cost us any money. Just a little time to try to find out, you know. Just go ahead and see what see what can happen, uh, and if it doesn't happen, I ain't, I ain't mad, and I ain't gonna I ain't gonna I ain't gonna you know be and complain about it. I'm not, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll know that we gave it our best shot, and uh, we reached a, and hopefully in the meantime we reached a bunch of people, and we got a lot of content out there, and that would be very very cool. Sorry, my collar was weird. <laughs> in any case, let's get to it. This is interesting. Um, the DC, the DNC chairman is trying to gaslight Americans in, 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 into believing um, that President Biden's positivity and unity message is still a thing. Uh, during his inaugural address, President Joe Biden refers refer, reference unity multiple times. Americans haven't believed that he can. Uh, Americans haven't believed he can for some time now, but recently it seems even less believable. Jamie Harrison thought, uh, though, who chairs the DNC, still thinks American people can be made to believe Biden's message of supposed unity uh, remains the same. Um, the question was, uh, in Biden's inaugural, inaugural address, uh, he said, we should not view each other as adversaries in this country, but as neighbors. Now, a little bit ago, he referred to... Um, this Make America Great agenda as semi-fascism. Not sure what semi-fascism is either, but these people these people make these terms up. Um, so the um, the the place the person on Face the Nation asked uh, Chairman Jamie Harrison, um, "How does that fit when you label the, 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 the uh, this entire party of people and all these people who are um, down with the America Make America Great Again?" Uh, ideology as semi-fascist. How does that jibe with the um, th this idea that we're not going to treat people as adversaries, we're going to treat them as neighbors? How does that go together? You know, what's interesting is that for a, a, a I don't know, a good second and two seconds and a half, Jamie Harrison, you, you can see his eyes cross and, you know, satellites linking up in outer space, the whole, the, the, I mean, the, the whole thing. And he said, um, President Biden has always been consistent. He just speaks it like it is. What? 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 So he tries to sing Biden's Biden page, even doubling down on the president's insults before Garrett cut him off to get a clear answer. Well, the one thing that President Biden has always been is consistent, um, he says, and he's always been someone who does what my grandfather used to do which is speak it plain, say it plain to the American people. Uh, and what we see right now is a full frontal attack by these extreme MAGA Republicans in this, in this country. Harrison began his response to the question with, Mr. Chairman, you embrace the rhetoric. To be fascism? To describe the Republican Party? Garrett cut him off to ask, to ask and, and with uh, Harrison talking taking issue with the phrasing of such a direct question. Harrison then went on to call out Republican views, as well as, of course, Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis, 
uh, and a concurring solo opinion um, by Justice Justice Thomas. Well, it's not about the embracing. It's calling what it what it is what it is. In the and, and at the end of the day, we are a country built on freedom. When you chip away at that, you see the bullying that takes place. Uh, in a place like Florida with DeSantis, when you see them chip away at privacy rights, when they try to demonize the other, they they attack the transgender kids. Or he just went on with the laundry list. The Jew just went on with the laundry list. And it just went on and on. Because that's what we're up against. It's almost easy. It's almost easy. It's al if, 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 if conservatives stay focused, it's almost easy. Because most of what they're most of what they're saying is true, and so we don't have to worry about. It. We don't have to worry about about trying to to push back and deny and turn over every lie. You know, you just go on and do the right things. So while many Democrats and their allies in the mainstream media claim Democrats have a greater shot of holding onto the Senate, potentially even the House, uh, pointing to a poll increase uh, for the president, Biden still remains at just 41.9% approval, according to Real Clear Politics. A further civics poll shows Biden doing poorly, including especially in, of course, battleground states. Let's, let's look at those numbers. Uh, Biden's approval rate um, in the new civics poll that came out on the 27th of August, his approval rating is only 37%. His disapproval rating is 54% um, in total. Only 26% up for um, the independence, 62% down independence. Uh, and this is Georgia. Uh, and these are up and down numbers. Georgia, 3357. Arizona, 3459. Nevada, 3755. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, 3755. Michigan, 3855. Um, New Mexico, 38.53, Wisconsin, 38.54, New Hampshire, 15, excuse me, 39.51. Really not doing well in those battleground states. The segment went way beyond uh, discussing 2022 as Harrison also assured, assured uh, Major Garrett that Biden has, quote, consistently said his intention is to run for president of the United States in 24. Uh, the National Democrat... The Democrat National Committee will be fully behind him and Kamala Harris. He claimed this president has a record of achievement. Wait. A record of achievement. I, 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 I can't. I don't know. I can't. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and America needs President Biden to continue that effort. I'm not sure what that is. Whether, whether or not Harrison and the DNC actually believe Biden should run for re-election of the United people, um, anybody who don't, including fellow Democrats. Uh, also on Sunday, a USA Today, um, I post, it post, IPOS, IPSOS, or is it LPSOS? I don't know. Uh, re reveal that 50% of Democrats do not want Biden to run for re-election and only 60% think he can win. In contrast, 59% of Republicans think Trump should be their nominee in 2024, while 82% of Republicans think he can win. The poll, even people who don't think he should run think that the dude can win. The poll also was conducted online uh, from August uh, 18th to 22nd with 2,345, 2,345, I wonder if that's a good number, uh, adults in a margin of error a plus or minus two and a half percent. Such a poll is actually more favorable to Biden than others have been, including a poll from the New York Times Siena College poll released early in July that found 64% of Democrats want someone other than Biden in 2024. Fascists, of course, was trending on Twitter earlier, um, or early in the day in reaction to Harrison's segment, as well as the president's remarks, which the White House has doubled down on. Yes. Where they benefit is that people don't know what the hell fascist means. That's what they benefit. I don't even know what they're fascist, man. 
Hey, he's a fascist. Yeah, Antifa are fascists. Not anti-fascist, they're actually fascists. I love this. Earlier this month, Governor Kathy Hochul, uh, Governor Hochul, Governor from um, New York, raised eyebrows for taking political jabs at Florida, California, New York, taking jabs at Florida. Why? Because Florida is winning, winning, winning. Tiger milk, baby, we are winning. Um, during a bill signing event for the Holocaust education in her state, I just want to say. To the 1.77 million Jews who call New York home, thank you for calling New York home. Don't go anywhere or to another state. Florida is overrated. I shouldn't say this, but look at the governor. He starts at the top down. She she had she, she had said going off script last week. She also uh, gained negative attention for telling Republicans to just jump on a bus and head down to Florida, where you belong. Get out of town because you do not re represent our values. You are not New Yorkers. I don't know when people are going to get it. I don't know. The governor of the state has told a good portion of people who live there and pay taxes and raise their children and have been there their entire lives and their families have been there their entire lives. You're not New Yorkers. You're Republicans. You need to get out. You don't belong here. We don't want you here. Governor of the state said that. Wow. Wow. Jump on a bus and head down to Florida where you belong. They want one party rule. So when they start talking about bipartisan, it's all BS. Her remarks came on Monday when she was stumping for Pat Ryan, a Democrat who ultimately won Tuesday's Special election to re represent the 19th scriptural district uh, against Republican Mark um, Milanaro. She specifically framed her remarks about it being in the era of Trump and Zeldin and and Moralino. A uh, representative Zeldin is a Republican opponent for the November gubernatorial election. Zeldin quickly posted a strongly worded video statement on Twitter and emphasized in multiple tweets it was a psycho demand. Oh, you know, actually didn't. He I'm telling you, I think libs of TikTok have it, have it down. Just post what they say without comment. This woman said out loud that if you're a Republican in New York, get out. You're not a New Yorker. She doesn't care the taxes you paid, the children you've raised there the work you've done there, you're a Republican, get out, go to Florida. Doesn't matter. These are the loving people who don't have hate in their heart. Really? All right, we're back in, the, in, in a minute. Thank you again for coming to the Morning Report. My name is Willie Lawson. The Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. Uh, we appreciate you greatly. Uh, again, if, you have, if you're watching this on YouTube and you have not subscribed, please subscribe. If you are watching this on Rumble, please subscribe. If you have not subscribed, share with your friends uh, on your Facebook pages, on your Twitter accounts, um, links on TikTok and, and Instagram. Get us out there. You are a marketing department. Even if you're sitting there naked on a beanbag chair, eating a bag of Cheetos, you are a marketing department and we need you. Uh, we'll be back right after this message. Look really hard right now. This next story might help you see the bright side just for a moment. Respect of Valentine's Ashton Paul. April showers bring May flowers, perfect for Mother's Day and prom and graduation. But this year, coronavirus has the calendar in a bit of a standstill. This is at flower shops, too. All of our, you know, daily orders, hotel, restaurant orders, you know, any standard orders that you have, any events that you had come out, they're canceled. So there's no income. There's nothing coming in. Christine Foscanzello owns Blooming Days Flower Shop in Tampa. 
Christine tells me the severity of the situation hit her about two weeks ago, when before her was a cooler full of flowers for a canceled wedding. And I just started to cry because I'm like, you know, what am I to do? But it was through those tears she answered her own question. And um, I said, we're going to have to give them away. That's the best thing to do. Lines of people showing up to collect their bouquet of joy. Also bringing Christine such joy, she'll keep going as long as she has to. When you do something like this, you see that there is food out there. And people need to realize that. All you have to do is pull up. Honk your horn, and somebody from the flower shop will come out and deliver the flowers to you without any contact. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you, and so much. Thank you. But with the hope that it'll bring a smile to your day. I want to do it until we find a cure, right? We need to find a cure, and when we find a cure, we're going to do a big, big blowout. Hoping that this year, brightening those April showers with Christine's own bit of sunshine will make for happier days ahead. In Tampa, I'm Ashley Paul, Spectrum Bay News 9. <laughs> Blooming Days is giving out free palms and prayer plants out of Easter Sunday. And if you'd like to help Blooming Days Flower Shop stay afloat during this difficult time, they're actually accepting donations in exchange for free flowers. They're also open for delivery for Easter, Mother's Day, and any upcoming occasion. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, welcome back. We appreciate you being here. Uh, this is the Morning Report. Morning Report. My name is Billy Lawson. Uh, the Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. Again, we appreciate you being here. Let's finish up with this last story uh, about our president. Uh, again, like I just said, you know, sometimes it's just better that we just listen. Just listen and repeat what they say. Despite being told that the elections were safe, we, told, we were told the election was safe, secure, and beyond corruption, President Joe Biden just said the quiet part out loud, making the Democrat Party want to go into hiding one more time. Last week, Biden told a group of rally, a group of rally goers that Democrats have a plan in place to make sure no one, no one, ever has an opportunity to steal an election again. Uh, I mean, YouTube, you can be mad at me, but this is what the president said. This is, this is his quote. This is not my quote. This is his quote. Here's what he said. He said, if we, will, if we elect two more senators, we keep the House and Democrats, we are going to get a lot of unfinished business uh, done. Uh, we're, we're going to get done. For folks, look, we first codify Roe v. Wade. Uh, we'll, ban, we'll ban, we'll ban assault weapons. We'll protect Social Security and Medicare. We'll pass universal pre-K. We'll restore the children's tax credit. We'll protect voting rights. We'll pass election reform and make sure no one, no one ever has the opportunity to steal an election again. I guess he's talking about Trump stealing 2026. I guess is what he's talking about. I don't know. I don't know. Is he? What do you think? We I mean, we keep being told that the elections are safe and fair, and and it was just what it was. And 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 if anybody mentions that they were not, those people lost their platforms. They lost their all their social media platforms. Anybody who said that the elections weren't free and fair lost their social media platforms. Here on YouTube, I don't know how how long this video stays up on YouTube, but anybody said, but the president of the United States just said that. I'm not sure how social media is going to deal with this. I'm not sure. We just talked about a little bit ago. I hope that we can get to a thousand subscribers and maybe get to the point where this challenge gets monetized. But I think after this after this statement by the president, I don't know if that happens. A lot of folks got demonetized and deplatformed by even mentioning that there were a problem with any of our elections, especially 20. But apparently there was a problem in 2016. I guess I'm I'm just I'm spitballing. Don't know what you think. Sure we'll like to know what you think. Send us an email uh, at fightbackmedia at gmail.com, fightbackmedia at gmail.com, fightbackmedia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Follow us on Instagram uh, at fightbackmedia follow, follow us on on where is it twitter 
at RBM Show and on TikTok at Fight Back Media. Until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody. And for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Bye-bye now.